the medium at which we broadcast keep changing and then uh, consumers also change. When I talk about consumers, I'm talking about those who listen to radio or television. So a quick breakdown, when FM or let's take it from AM, when AM radio started, we have what we call the electronic media and then we have what we call the print media. I hope you know those two things. Now, um, back then I remember when I was very young, 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 I'm so young, uh, my late father would tell me to buy newspapers early in the morning. My father loves to read uh, daily graphic and do um, Ghanaian Times, these two newspapers. Early in the morning, we need to go to the newsstands to get these two newspapers. I think that is the sources that he trusted, even though there were a couple of newspapers, just like what we have now. We have a lot of radio stations, but sometimes when you listen to news or when you hear about any information, some of us we are going to ask, ah, why did you hear this news? And I don't want to mention something. When we, we mention some kind of radio station, oh, yeah, oh, uh, so back then my father would let me buy the daily graphic and the Ghanaian Times. That was the source of news. Now, my father was listening to what we call the AM. I don't know how many of you had the opportunity to listen to AM radio. Did any of you? Wow. Okay. Okay. So there was what we call the AM radio. That is the amplitude modulation. And under the amplitude modulation, then we had the SW1, which in Ghana we were calling it GBC1. And there was SW2, GBC2. Now, when GBC here in Accra, when they do their broadcast from Kanda, when they broadcast from Kanda, the AM transmission, one thing about AM transmission back then is that it has a very good coverage. But when it comes to sound quality, it is very bad. So when GBC, they do their transmission from Kanda GBC radio, it can go as far as Nigeria. So people in Nigeria were listening to GBC radio because they were broadcasting using the amplitude modulation. And the amplitude modulation technology is such a way that when you send a broadcast through an antenna it's using the AM transmitters, it goes into the sky and hits the sky. It bounces back on Earth like that, and that is how it's, it's in the West. So GBC radio, back then, when there is a program on GBC Radio, they get comments, but when you go back then, there was nothing like social media. And if you want to um, pass a comment on any program, there was nothing like a phone in. You need to write back then. And I remember my first time, first time that I had my name on radio, myself and my father, we went to GBC to go and buy a, we call it music request coupon. Now when you buy the music request coupon, you have about five names to write. You pay for the coupon, you write those names, you take and you submit the name. So they will tell you, the program is at Wednesdays. So Wednesday you have to be by your radio. But it's no guarantee that your name will mention because the requests they get are many. So people buy the coupon. And I remember that day, every day we've been listening and the program was supposed to be at Tuesday. Tuesday we sat by the radio, nothing came. Another Tuesday, for a whole month, something we some request. So a day that the thing was aired, myself I was not ready because I was outside. So I was there and my senior brother came to call me that oh um, our names are being mentioned on the radio. When I came back and I wanted to listen, the broadcast has ended. I I following my point. So it was very difficult for us to get news on the go. Fast forward, we were able to get to a point where in 1994 about the German government donated um, broadcasting equipment to Ghana. But before then, uh, when they donated those equipment to us, those equipment were FM equipment. As at that time, we have not seen FM broadcasting before. Even though Dr. Rebukuri had started 
a pirate radio called Radio I, which was running around Alajo, uh, Avenom there. It was a pirate radio station. So Dr. Rubi had started, he actually started the first private radio station, but it was a pirate radio station. A pirate radio station is a radio station which has not been authorized. So you just put on your transmitter and you start broadcasting. It becomes a pirate radio station. So Dr. Rubi has started something like that. Then the German government came to Ghana, flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rollins was the president of Ghana, and they donated broadcasting equipment to Ghana. That was FM broadcasting. But then we were still operating the uh, AM and then the FM. At AM, that is the SW1 and then the SW2. Now when the German government donated those radio equipment to us, it was FM. We started trying it here in Accra. And we realized that the sound was very good compared to the AM. AM, you don't have a good sound, especially um, if the sun is very hot, if the weather changes, it affects the sound quality. So, the German government donated FM equipment to us. Oh, Ghana, we are giving it to you for free. So, Ghana government took custody of those equipment. We started a radio station. That is the first commercial um, public radio station here in Accra. That radio station was called um, Radio GAR. Radio GAR. Now, when Ghana government tested that equipment and realized that FM has a very good sound quality, and in fact, when you listen to the sound and the play music, you can feel that yes, this is the sound, the good sound we are looking for. Now, after Ghana government tested and they realized that the thing was good, the government wrote back to the German government that. Uh, the thing you gave us, uh, it was very good, uh, so if you can still give us, we need more, donate more of the equipment. And the German government told Ghana government that, okay, so the one we gave you was for free. If you need more, you need to do what? You need to buy. So Ghana government bought 10 set of broadcasting equipment. So one of the radio stations was the, what I mentioned, Radio GAR. Radio GAR. And then Ghana government bought one for every region. So when you go to each of our regions, Ghana government is operating um, FM radios in all the regions. You go to uh, Eastern region, they have the Sunrise. Uh, you go to um, so Kumasi, they have Ghana City Radio. Every region they have. But currently, Radio GAR is no more. But we call it Unique FM. That is what we call it. It used to be radio genius. And back then, I remember my first time I saw what we call outside broadcasting, OB, was when Radio GR had a program called Good Morning Accra. And this Good Morning Accra, they look at a community like, uh, let's say, Asharaja, area Masama. They come here and then they set up their equipment and then they do a live broadcast from that location. And I was very little and I heard that GBC radio is in the area. That day I told my mom I'm not going to school. I want to go and see how the radio thing is operating. They came with a van and people were talking. Some were holding their radio and they are talking and you could hear. And I was so confused. Ah, why is it that they are talking and it's coming into our radio? And I was totally confused. So this has been how radio and the, the media space has been like. And all along, television was also operating. But television was operating on VHF. VHF, that is very high frequency, before it came to what we call the UHF. Now, fast forward, um, we've gotten to a point where now I, I always tell people that citizen journalism is on the rise. Now, I don't need to wait for Ghanaian Times the next day to tell me about accident. Now, I don't need to wait till evening for GBC or for any of our radio or TV stations to tell me what is trending, to tell me what is in the news. I remember when I was with Media General, we went to JPT, a town in the Eastern region, and I was in the hotel room where one of our colleagues, I had accidents, accidents. When I came, the car had some assaulted and people were around. When I got there, there was a young man, accident has happened, and the young man was on his phone and he was videoing. Now, before you even die, people can get video of you dying. Like, as you are drinking the poison, people have videos of you, how you died. Like, even if you die and go, you 
can even WhatsApp your video, how you died, people can get it for you. We've got it to a point where we say we are in the era of new media, where we say that we are in the, a world where we are using um, digital media space. And in this digital media space, there is nothing like um, Adam FM, there is nothing like Peace FM. Now, there are a lot of news that comes out. And trust me, people are able to break the news before our, even our main media houses are able to break the news. Do you agree? Accident can happen. And those who are even dying, they can take their phones and video, put it on, on social media. And now we realize that even the mainstream media, they feed on social media. So they get hold of a video, then it becomes something that is in the public domain. They pick up stories from uh, social media. So now we are in Ghana, not just in Ghana, but in the world, we are practicing what we call citizen journalism. Now everyone is a journalist. Yesterday I was in the church and we were singing praises. I was very happy. Before I realized on my phone, someone sent me pictures of me clapping and waving my handkerchief. The person was talking to me. And I'm like, ah, hello, bro, are you here? He says, where? He says, oh, I'm home with the family. I'm like, but how did you get my picture? He says, oh, we are watching on Facebook. We are watching the service on Facebook. And I'm like, oh, okay, wow. So it means that we have gotten to a point where everyone is a journalist. Forget about your training you had. Forget about you've been to HS Media, you've been through training. But you see, we've got it to a point where media houses are employing people who can even give them trends. But I always say this, there is a difference between a content for uh, the mainstream media and there is a difference between producing content for online or social media. Do you get my point? There is a difference between producing content for a mainstream media and then there is a difference between producing content for social media. And this is one thing that currently we are missing in our, our way. Now you watch a lot of radio or you, you watch radio stations, now we are streaming on Facebook. Everybody wants to leverage on social media. Now, even radio stations and TV stations, now content producers or the owners of the stations want to train on social media, but not on their platform. Now, people can trade insults on social media, fight in studios, then the radio station themselves will cut, and then they will share it on their social media platforms. They want to train. So now the content we listen to on radio, the ones we listen to on, we watch on TV, they are creating content which are not meant to be on um, social media. Now, on the mainstream media, whatever you do is gone. But on social media, or when you want to use the digital space, whatever you do can be there and it keeps reminding you and it's going to be there forever. So when you post pictures on Facebook, when you post pictures on um, YouTube, you, you are a fan of TikTok, you do things, you post things there. The secret is that anything you post there is gone and is gone forever. A lot of work I have done in the normal traditional media. Some of them because, you know, when you are in this space, you need to be able to forecast and see what is ahead of you. Currently, I can even show you my first time I sat behind the console to host the program. I have a video of it, I have a picture of it, and I have kept it because at a point in time, I realized that this thing is going to fade out. So it is better for me to adjust myself to be able to fit into what I'm doing. I agree. You see, you want to be generous, but you need to have that foresight. You need to be able to forecast and know what is going to happen ahead of you. I have my first TV program I hosted. I still have that video. 
It is still there. And if you should ask me how I was or how I was able to get it. A friend introduced YouTube to me somewhere 2005. And when the person introduced YouTube to me, I created one, even though I didn't understand how the system works. I uploaded that video on there. So when I have a video I have shot, I'll just upload it on that YouTube video. And now YouTube has become an archive for me. There are a lot of content and a lot of things I've done in the past. I don't have copies on CDs, I don't have them on hard drives, I don't have them anywhere. But anytime I fall on YouTube, because YouTube has been able to archive all those things for me. Now, we have gotten to another point where it is not enough to just work in a radio station or it is not enough to work in a TV station. It is not enough. If I tell you it is not enough, it is not enough in terms of finances. It is very difficult to work in a radio station to be paid. There are lots of people we listen to them on radio, we are happy. We, we, oh, I'm telling you, a lot of them are hungry. So currently, radio and TV stations, they are not paying. Few people, you, you hear of big, big media houses, but I can tell you that there are some media houses that when you go there, it's about six people who are being paid. I even know a radio station here in Accra. The owner is my friend. I sat down with him, we're chatting, we're having chat. Oh, chat. And this is what he told me. I asked him, so, hey, how do you pay your staff? He told me, me, I don't pay them. I pay myself and the manager. All of them are attaches. All of them are attaches. And this is a commercial radio station running here in Accra, Ghana. But the CEO tells me that I am not paying, I don't have anyone on the payroll. It is just about myself and the manager of the station. And I asked him, ah, but why are you not paying them? And this is what he said. Me into prepare and to light and 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 to machine. Now let's now be ready. Now go now out here. Now we will see Now we see you. So we have we we are at a point where. And sometimes, most of these radio is the big names you hear. There are presenters there who are not even being paid well. So I tell people when I meet young people like this, this is what I tell them. In this world, God, I'm a Christian, so don't be offended if I use God. One thing is that God has given us talents. And all of us sitting here, we are creative in one way or the other. We are unique in one way or the other. You are different from him, he's also different from you. There is something in, in him, it is not in him. You can do something he cannot do. There is something unique about yourself. You possess what we call the creative power. Because you know God is very creative. If you want, if we talk about creativity, like if you want to know who is more creative here in this world, I can tell you that God is very, very creative. And God created us with that creative power. So all of us seated here, we carry that uh, creative power. Okay? Because of that, there is a saying that a bird with a flying wing cannot die of hunger. Now, I believe all of us, we use Android phones, we use iPhones. Me, I'm not a fan of iPhones. I can't use it. I don't mean knowing. Like, in some way, we want to. I'm not good. So, I like to use um, this one. I bought it last week. So it's called Poco. I know it's a China phone. Like, it does uh, all the things. It, it has good pictures. I do so many things. I, I love the phone. It's called Poco. I'm not a fan of iPhones because I don't know. I don't know how to operate it. It's very complex. I don't know. And iPhone users, when they you tell them, oh, I want you to take a picture of me, they will never send you the picture. Yeah. iPhone users, <laughs> you have to. Go.
make them. You call them, oh, we pitch an old guy and old man. Oh, we may never buy me, but they are here. Oh, we pitch an old, oh, they may too free to one man. They will never even say. So we have, we, 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 we have phones that the creativity in us, we can dwell and then hold on to that creative work and make something out of uh, using our phones. You can work in a media house, but alongside, you can decide that I want to use my uh, creativity or what God has deposited in me. Because there are lots of people who will be interested in everything that you are doing, but you never know. So, one time, uh, recently, a um, uh, veteran broadcaster has started doing content on YouTube and on social media. When I saw it, I started laughing. And I'm like, you, this thing, we, we have started long ago, you are now coming. You come and beat us on the way. Now we are the masters of the game. Do you understand? So, last time, I think last, was it last or last two years, during your graduation, there was one graduation around uh, yeah, I shared something with, 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 them, with them and I said that in this my media space, I've worked with Media General, Omea FM TV3. I did a lot of voiceovers on Omea FM and Omea TV and TV3. I've done Etsibani, all of them, after Jukutu. I've done so many things with them. But I tell you that my biggest breakthrough, my biggest exposure never came from TV3. It never came from Omea FM. It never came from TV, uh, Omea TV, Akuma, I've worked with talk before. My biggest breakthrough in the media never came from all this and that. Yeah. yeah, even Chanahara, when we were hosting pastors, it never came through there. But my biggest breakthrough and my biggest exposure came on social media. Like um, three, four months ago, I was driving around um, Accra Mall and then a car, I think it was just passing by. And then the man pulled up and went like, are you, are, you, are, you, are you a presenter? And I said, yes. Uh, I need you, I need you. And I said, eh, let's park and talk here. Because I like money. money. <laughs> I said, let's park. He said, no, no, no. And the man said, oh, no, no, take, take my number, take my number. So he gave me a number. And I asked one of my, my boys in the car, Charlie, get down, go and take the man's car. He asked me, do you have a car? Me too. You know, but I said, I don't have a car. <laughs> and I, I said, go and take the man's car. He brought the car. And I checked the car and I realized, hey, Charlie, this man, because all the numbers were foreign numbers, American numbers. I checked you and I'm like, okay. So two days time, I forgot to even call him. Two days time, I called the uh, MTN number the man gave me. And not knowing it was the driver, the driver's number that was given to me. And I introduced myself to the driver. That, oh, I'm the one you saw me around the mall driving. You people said you need me, you want to me, so. And he says, okay, I'm going to tell my boss. We will call you. I was there and then I had a call from the driver. He says, my boss wants to talk to you. I said, okay. And then the boss was like, um, can, can, we, can we meet? Can we meet? And I said, it's around 8 p.m. I said, yeah, can we meet? And I said, okay, where? And he says, choose your location. So I chose a location closer to my office in case they want to cut my hair. <laughs> my body will close to where people locate me fast. And the man came. When the man came, he said, okay, I have something. I am. I'm into cryptocurrency. I have a company in America. It's registered, but he was talking plenty. I need you to advertise for me. But you see, I was I was wanting to get to a point where you will say, so we'll give you this. <laughs> I, I'm not interested in what is the money. If you want money, you know, if you want to make people happy, give them money. So the man, this is what the man told me. Okay. Um, uh, can we go for a meeting on Monday? I said, yeah, Monday, what time? He said, oh, by 11. So, okay. Hopefully, I drove, I took my life, let's go, let's go and see him. Today, if this man doesn't tell me anything, then I will not come back again. I got to the gate, and the security guy saw me, he said, oh, I know you. I watched your video. I said, hey, hey, me too, okay. 
I entered. I entered. The man was in the office at the reception. So we just oh, I watch your content on Facebook. I've seen you around today. Yeah. And to be our game <laughs> The man was like, ah, you know people you know. He goes, oh yeah, we watched his video yesterday. Okay. So we sat down and looked. But the man said, okay, I want to make you a brand ambassador. Yeah, that's wow. The man made me a brand ambassador of Ash Cookie. He was a pretty currency. And he's paying me, he's giving me money. It's enough. You understand? This social media, I never got this opportunity from TV3. This is my me. This is me using my China phone to do content and moving around to do content. The man just saw me. He, he just saw me like that. And then he said, Charlie, um, I want you to be a brand ambassador. Now most of my content I put his advert there and even every month he's paying the, uh, currently every month he pays like 5,000 just for me to advertise, okay, just to do advert for him on social media. He pays me 5,000 cities every month, that's all. So that is where we have got into. So if you are seated here and you are praying, you graduate and go and work at this event, you are wasting your time. If you want to graduate and go and work at, you name them. I'm not here to discourage you. I want to tell you what is ahead of you. It is good for you to master your craft. I mean, I, you know, I have, a, I have my own TV station. I have my personal TV station. Zadok TV is my own. I have my own TV. But I've never appeared on that TV before. But it's these two people, they come on my TV. I've never been on my TV cell before. And even with technology, where technology has got into, my TV station, I operate it even from my phone. The TV station is somewhere around Mara. It's in uh, Miss Bell's house. That is where the TV station is. And me, I sit down in my room and I operate the TV with my phone. I have not employed, I don't have any technical person I have employed to even handle MCR for me. I do everything myself. I use softwares, I program and I tell the computers to play this, play that thing for me and then it will play for me. So, what you need to do, I'm not here to discourage you. It is good to be on radio, it is good to be on TV. But the larger picture and where the media is taking us to is where we are getting to social media. We are getting to pushing content online. And now, traditional media are still feeding on social media for stories. Traditional media, we are still feeding on Hopefully, man, uh, Monday, I'll be in Kumasi to go and run a story for a woman in the uh, U.S. There is someone who is sick at some way, said, uh, man, so... Sometimes people will pay me to do content for them. People will pay me to even interview them. So we should tell you where we are getting to. So if you are sitting here and all you are interested in, they say, what kind of person you Yes, the kind of casino one all right. Yeah. But at the end, that casino what me. Hello, are you with me? Yes, yes, yes. I want to be a, a news reader. I'll never discourage you for being a news reader. Just be it. But if that is where your creativity lies, is there a way you can monetize that your creative work? Because it is not easy. For you to be employed in media houses, I'm telling you this hard truth. Some of these things we don't tell people, we just keep quiet. For you to also come and face that world war. Let me tell you, before you hear a radio station starting to air and doing test transmission, everybody, all the workers have been employed already, they know who is doing what. Before you hear test transmission, and this thing, test transmission, before you hear, oh, there is a new radio station, test transmission. Um, 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 uh, we have a friend, Rainy, he works with us, I say. I remember last year, December, and he called, Charlie, we are starting a key radio station. I want to push for you to come and handle the drive for us. And I said, oh, okay, okay. You will be okay, you will come. You see, there is a friend who is inside, and he is giving me this information. That, oh, Charlie, if you, I want you to come and handle the drive, uh, if we start that radio station. So, currently, I've realized they started the three radio station. 
If I want to be on radio, I can just go call him and still pursue. Just that I'm not interested. So if I still want to pursue, I'll just give him the phone call. So if you are not in the industry, a lot of things will happen and you never even know. Now when the radio station starts, then you begin to write like this. Application for employment as a morning show host. Are you serious? They've, they've selected those who are going to be on air already. So in the absence where you are not, because sometimes eh, after school, if you begin to write letters and they don't respond to you, frustration can set in. You can end up saying, I want to go into beat making. I want to learn how to be. You want to be doing certain things, okay? But you shouldn't let that thing die. If you want to venture into beat making, okay, and it's not bad, you can go into beat making. But how do I make money apart from selling physical products to people? How do I make money from my creative work? So you can be in beat making, get a phone, get someone to film for you, start something on YouTube, and that is all. This is not anything that is difficult. If you are able to push through and you succeed online, the TV and the radio stations will come for you. You will never write application letter. See, those who are getting big money in the media space, they don't write application letters. The radio and TV stations approach them. And one interesting thing, and the nice thing about being in the media space is when you are sleeping in your one corner, and then a programs manager of a radio or TV station calls, telling we need you to come and do this. That is when you can come with your figure. But when you go, and you go and tell them, let me share this with you. My first time when I, I, I went to media general interview, and then I sat down, they asked me a few questions, I answered, and then they asked, young man, how much do you want to be paid? I was sitting down. I was afraid that if I should mention anything big, I will lose the job. And you know, when I'm, I'm, I pick Chocho and I pass around TV3 and I see this building, say, hey, John, this place, I have to work here one day. So that day, I was invited for interview, job interview. I said, hey, they asked, young man, how much should we pay you? I said, please, um, I live around Kubashi. I said, no, 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 no. How much? I said, I live around Kubashi, so I'll pay George. I said, hey. How much? I said, 800. He said, 800. And he wrote, Is that your last? I said, 600. <laughs> okay, 600. Is that your last? I said, You give me 400. I wanted to even tell them that don't pay me because I want to work there. You, you don't understand me. Yes. If you understand me, you will do it for free. I want to work there. And when I said 400, they were looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> and you have one year to sign this. And I said 400. And then they were just laughing. They were just laughing. So from 800, I slashed 50% off. And I wanted to take 400 cities. And then they were just laughing. And I asked them, oh, are they, please, is it too much? Ah. If it's too much, I will still go down. <laughs> and then I asked them, because they were laughing at me, like I mentioned 400, I came to 400, 800, and they were just laughing. And I was like, oh, I've mentioned too much. And I was just there, confused. And they were just like, so okay, you will hear from us. I said, okay, please. But in case it's too much, you call me. <laughs> and, I saw, and I was ready to do it again. You see, I wanted to work there. You don't understand me. Yes. My, the point is that I wanted to work there. But you see, after that interview, I was not called. So you see, if you want to be in this media space, one thing you need to do is that you need to build contacts. If you don't have contacts, you are lost. Because sometimes people have to recommend you. If you don't get someone to recommend you, so you need to take opportunity. 
when you meet people who knows people who know them see this man is too homeless when you, you should meet people eh? now if I want to do anything with access media I won't put together a letter it is just a phone call I just reach out to Mr. Acha Mr. Acha I want to come and use your place for this he is going to ask me when okay Tuesday time 10 a.m. and you say okay he doesn't have any he you I'll just come imagine someone who doesn't know Mr. Acha he will tell you go and write a letter your letter will come to you the reading will even take like a month before we read your letter. Yes. <laughs> and the response. So you should know people in the media space. When you know people within the media space, these are people who are going to connect you. Okay? We call them the blogs. They are the blogs. They are going to blog you. They are going to link you up to other people. Because, see, in this our media space, if you don't have the lens, if you don't have the connections, it's going to be a problem for you. So you need to be, make sure that you build the lens, you build connections, and you position yourself to where we have gotten to. That is the new media. You need to position yourself. Don't just post anything on social media. Don't just post. I never believed that I was good, I was I would be able to even set up my own TV station. No, 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 it was not part of it. But I have been able to do social media, do YouTube, and I've been able to set up my own TV station. A TV station I've never even appeared on before. I see it, I operate it, but I don't appear on it. When I was working at Media General, Media General couldn't pay me money that can give me enough to be able to build my TV station. But from social media, this is what I've been able to do. So, the biggest breakthrough I had was on social media. Now I get to places people recognize me, not just when I was on radio, not when I was on TV, but they recognize the things I do on social media. And people spend a lot of time on this. Now people don't even watch TV anymore. Few people spend time. Now when they are watching TV, they are still on their phone. So if you are a student here, why don't you leverage on this number of audience that are available on social media? Because there is a lot of audience. Now when you look at statistics, maybe next time we get projected, I'll bring you, I'll come and show you some slides, you get to understand. The number on, of people on social media, Every hour is more than people watching TV. Those who are even watching the TV are still on their phones. Yes. Now people will be watching Nana Mac Brown and they still want to watch it on Facebook, whether it is real, like they want to go, <laughs> want to go and check whether it's Manana, like we are still with our phones. We want to look at what people are saying, what people are talking about. I'll be ending very soon. So I'll urge all of you to start doing something online. First of all, to be able to succeed online, I'm going to give you some tips. First of all, you should be creative. But as I said, all of you sitting here, you are creative people. Sure. All of you, all of you, you are creative. You can do something unique. So how do you even survive in this space where we've got into? How do we even survive? First of all, you need to have an edge for yourself. N I C E. Uh, N I C H E. You need to have a niche. A niche simply means you need to have an area you want to you want to be. Now online and on social media, people are doing so many things. People are doing so many things. So you ask yourself that I want to create a niche for myself. I want to be on social media. I want to leverage on the number of audience there. I want to monetize my idea. To monetize your idea means I want to make money out of your creative ways and then the ideas you have. So how do you do it? First of all, I said you need to create a niche for yourself. The niche simply means that what do I want to do? 
okay, I want to interview, um, uh, let's say, I want to interview celebrities, like musicians, actors, and the models. I want to be interviewing them. This is a niche you have created for yourself. It's for you to look at other people who are in that same niche. Do you hear my point? You look at other people who are within that same niche with you. Okay, so I want to be interviewing, um, uh, um, let's say, musicians and celebrities. Okay, the other people, the other competitors, what are they doing? Now, there is nothing new under this uh, earth. There is nothing new under this sun. You need to look at what people are doing. Now, you check your niche, I want to do this. Okay, who is around? Who is doing what I'm doing? How is the person making it? You don't need to go to the person to ask the person, how are you making it or how are you surviving and how are you getting the numbers on social media? You can begin to do your own research around people within your niche. When you do that research and you're able to get and know what we are doing, then you ask yourself one question. What, the next thing is, what can you do to improve, to be unique from what they are doing? Because, for instance, let's assume Zion Felix is normally seen interviewing um, celebrities and musicians, and you also want to do the same. You ask yourself that what is Zion doing that I can do to be unique? Is there anything I can also do to be unique so that people can watch? Because, one, you are a new content creator. Nobody knows your name, nobody knows you. So, why do I even have to come on your page to even watch something? I won't come. But you need to do something that is very, very unique. Apart from what is on the market or what is on, on, on social media. So you have to be unique. And then another thing which is also very important is that you choose a good name. A good name for the brand because you are going to build a brand. Now, choosing a name, it should be a name that when someone, or you mention to someone, and the person goes online to search, it's not going to be difficult for the person to be able to search. At least it should be something simple. Something that people can really relate to. Now, you don't need to be a pro in video editing before you can start creating your content. With a cut cut, with a film mural, you can do your own editing with your phone. Or some of you, I don't know what you do with your phone. Because I, mean, I can't buy a phone like this one, uh, like 2008 or so, 2008. And then I should be able to get money out of this phone. I can't just be using it for phone calls. If it's phone calls, I'll just buy them. But since I have a phone with a camera angle, even on my way when I was driving here, I realized the road is no good. But if I was in that niche, like I would even pick my phone and I'll video and I'll begin to talk. I'll begin to do ranting. I'll just rant behind the videos and I'll post on the social media. And people will just feed on my content and it will give me the numbers. So you can use software like CapCut or you can use Filmora, which are free. Even though Filmora, you need to pay to use. But if you don't have money to pay to use, all they will do is that they watermark the video after you are done. But it's nothing. People don't even pay attention to uh, videos that have been marked whatever, so you can just forget about it. Now, you are going to start work. You are going to start creating the content. It's social media you are going to do. You know, PCFM and all radio stations who are into news, there is not a single day they will tell you today no news. The same thing applies to you as a content creator. There shouldn't be a single day you don't have a story. So if a lot of people don't succeed on social media and online because they post something today. You are talking three weeks. <laughs> Next year, they will post something today. And then next year, they will come back and post. So, if you want to succeed on social media and you start creating those content, you post today. Sometimes you check the time, it's 11 10 or 11. So, Saturdays, you can decide that for a start, you are going to post weekly. As you move on, you increase. Because if I come on your, let's say, your Facebook, 
your YouTube, your TikTok, and I see a content, and I'm, I'm, I'm interested in the content, I watch the content, oh, this is a good content. And I come back the next time, and you still have the same thing. I come back again, the same thing is there, nothing has changed, I will never come back, back again. So what you have to do is that consistency. You decide, for a start you can decide, okay, but you see, if you want to succeed fast, 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 eh, I'll urge you that do it every day. Be posting video every day. Today, tomorrow you are posting. The next day you are posting. You'll be posting. You'll be posting. Last time I was there, I said I want to test something on my Facebook. So I just put a question mark there. Within a space of 30 minutes, I have 150 comments. <laughs> like question mark. I said I want to test something. I want to test something. I put a question mark there. And then, like people are, ah, what is it? What is happening? That is how I realized I have arrived. <laughs> <laughs> and so, oh, wait, are you okay? Is everything all right? Someone will come into your door to know you. Ah, what is happening? Is everything, are we safe? He said, you are not safe. He says, it's coming, you are not safe. So, you keep posting every day. When you begin to post, people will get hold of your videos. People will get hold of your videos. They will start to share. They will share your video. Now you share your content also with your Facebook, your WhatsApp group friends. You begin to share with them. So consistency is very important. When you want to succeed on social media, you have to be very, very consistent. And then you have to brand yourself very good. You need to look good. Because social media, one thing is that social media, people are attracted by what they see. So you need to look good about what you want to talk about. It depends on, so you need to look at what you want to talk about. Then you costume yourself to fit into it. Um, I've, I've been to a master class for social media. Someone was asking me, so do I have to go and buy a costume for every shoot? It is easy, it is very simple. You can have a customized t shirt, of course. You have your channel's name on. So that is a t shirt you wear. Like if, if you are going to Salvation Army Church, everybody wears white. Uh, Sunday, so you don't know who is wearing a new one. So just have a customized. <laughs> just have a customized. Uh, a customized T-shirt. You write your the name of your channel on. Now you see, people. Data is very expensive here yeah, in this country. So how do you even get someone to watch your video? Me, I get people to watch my video because my video. Soon as you chance on. You can't stop watching. Because the starting itself will kill you. Normally, I go and I interview people who are sick, who need money. So, if you click on my video, the first thing that will appear is not my intro. It's the person who is crying and who needs the help. So, I'll, we call it clickbait. So, I'll bait you with that. That one will hook you and then you. What is happening? Why is she crying? And sometimes before I even post video, I come on my reel on Facebook and I post a short, a short, something very short on. Then people will see it and say, ah, when are you releasing the full video? And I go, okay, so you want the full video. Then I know this thing will go. Then all those people who respond to that content, when I release the video, I share the links with them. So you don't start. Now, if I should take this microphone around, and I actually go to give me intro for a program. I'm going to record the same intro. Hello, good, uh, good afternoon. This is Hatches TV. Uh, there should be a book. You should be, because data is very expensive. So as soon as you start talking, it should be something that will get your attention for someone to be on. Some people can watch my content and then they will tell me, oh, I was watching your content, it's nice. I have run out of data, so I'm going to get, I say, yeah, buy more data, watch. Keep watching. <laughs> so if you have a book, your intro should be on point. You should give a very tight intro. Yes, I mean, I don't teach people how to do intro. Intro should be something from you. You should understand what you are coming to do. So give it to them. Give it to them. When I do videos, I get the catchy parts, I bring it at the beginning, you see someone crying, you see someone who is a cripple walking on the floor, and then I'll make sure I give it a sound, a sorrowful thing, I'll touch that whole spot, your heart, I'll touch that, oh, then you two begin to cry. So when you watch my video, someone says, oh, I've been crying throughout. You say, hey, 
you know, people. So you need to do all those things. I think um, I have to end. Maybe one day we will, when we meet, we'll talk more. Uh, so just do these simple things. Know that we are not in that era. We are got into another era. We are in a new media space. Adjust yourself here so that when finally, because now, do you, I don't know whether you are aware that the National Communications Authority, they authorize and they give authorization to radio and TV stations to, uh, to work. Currently, they have started giving out digital radio license to people who want to operate digital radio. So we call it DAB, Digital Audio Broadcast. It's in UK and a lot of countries. A lot of countries are not using FM today. They've been going to digital audio broadcast. Call it DAB. UK plenty is there. DAB. This is where we are going to. So don't be at home and say I want to be a drive time host and be disturbing everybody. Please get a niche for yourself. You have a phone. Use it. Start doing something. Now that you are in school, do it. Mr. Ben is there. He's there to correct you if you have any problem. I can share my number with you later on. Anything we can talk and then we see how best. Now, another thing, last one that I'm done. If you want to succeed in this digital media space, you need to also collaborate with other people. So, for instance, if I do a collaboration video with you, I have my numbers. It means that I'm going to give you some of my numbers. Do you get my point? So we do collaboration videos. Now, pastors are making thousands of dollars from social media. Those of you who watch Alpha Hour, and my friend Imanol J, Prophet Imanol J, and all of them, there is this Nigerian pastor my wife keeps watching NSC. every morning. Something streams. Streams of joy. What God cannot do does not exist. What God cannot do does not exist. And you go and check the numbers. Pastor has about more than 1 million subscribers on YouTube alone. And I say, wow, this pastor is cashing out. Why can't we, the trained journalists, capitalize on social media and make money? Because I'm sure, who is not here to learn and make money? Maybe you are not here to buy something. Okay, so uh, I'm done.